think of Wall Street, these are the images and sounds that come to mind. A crowded room filled with humans, complete utter chaos, people trading and a true sign of American capitalism. But the Wall Street that I know is much more reminiscent of this. Quiet server rooms, all created for the specific purpose of holding algorithmic trading systems. Just the quiet sound of fans ensuring our ambient temperature is kept around 18 degrees. So what are these machines and what are they really doing on Wall Street? What is their purpose? What is the reason we've entrusted so much of our financial system to these machines? Well, for one, we have to understand where they've come from. 15 years ago, these algorithms were seen as very geeky concepts of business. Nobody really wanted to acknowledge them at the parties or speak to them. Today, those same guys are the entire business of Wall Street. To represent this, let's see what's happened and the repercussions. In terms of volume, Recent statistics are pegging it at about 73% of all the trades or volume happening on Wall Street is coming from an automated system, an algorithm of some sort that's making decisions. Simply put, three quarters of every single decision or trade going on out there is from a machine and not a human. What has this had in terms of repercussions? Well, we used to always think of trades and markets as a long-term concept. Invest today, pull your money out in three years from a stock. But the reality is the average holding time period for stocks on Wall Street has shrunk to a mere 22 seconds. So why are these algorithms out there? What are they really doing? Why are they replacing us humans? Well, let's take a look at the regulatory space and what exchanges have done to welcome these machines out there. The NICE has become a for-profit organization. As of 2005, they are no longer not-for-profit. In the past, their main mandate was to regulate markets and create order a place where people could raise capital. Today, their main mandate is shareholder value creation. They make revenue in two major forms, data and trading revenue. The more data one consumes and the more one trades, the more money the exchanges make. Two things that algorithms happen to be particularly good at. The second major change came in the form of hybridity, an initiative taken upon by the stock exchanges, such as the nice New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, which basically melded electronic markets and people as one. If we take a look at the picture in front of us, this is the same trading floor we saw from earlier. What's interesting to note is even though people are dealing in person, they still have an electronic system in front of them in which they report the trades to the electronic market. No matter what, man and machine has become one in the neural network. So how do these machines work? Well, and I really can't give you guys enough aspirin to make you sit through that kind of presentation. It's extremely complex, but there are certain key things to understand. Algorithms are the big guns of Wall Street. They control a massive part of our volume. Now, the strategies come in many forms, such as bullets for different types of arms. They can be simple things like a buy or sell at a certain price, or they can be much more complex and take in massive amounts of data set or use behavioral financial approaches. The important thing to understand, though, is that these machines do not look at value. Traditionally, investors have always prided themselves on figuring out the true value of what a company is worth. These machines look at one thing and one thing only, price. Price I buy it for, price I sell it for. Essentially, these machines are just massive dealers who sit around and look at millions and millions of deals per second, trying to find one that might be that perfect deal according to statistics. When that happens, they get in on it and hope to profit. Their speed gives them an advantage that no human can even begin to compete with. How fast are they? Well, let's do a little bit of math. Up until now, I've spoken for a pool of about seven minutes. Now, why am I showing you what one minute is equivalent to in milliseconds? Milliseconds was the old way that we used to measure our trade times. About three or four years ago, 25 milliseconds was your good point of reference if you wanted to know how much trades your machine could handle per minute. Now remember, I've spoken for a total of about seven minutes. This translates into about 420,000 milliseconds. Now assuming my machine can trade every 25 milliseconds, that means in the time my speech has started, I could have placed 16,800 trades. Now remember, this is a conservative number, and things have drastically changed from three or four years ago. Today we operate in microseconds. We're about eight minutes right now. 
That translates into 480 million microseconds. Now, modern day exchanges are quoting times of about 126 second, microsecond times in order to request a quote or ask the market for a price of a given stock. But what's more impressive is trade times are hovering around 400 microseconds. And that magical number we've all been waiting for, 1.2 million trades placed since my speech started. Now remember, this is assuming we trade one stock, which I can promise you, if I've spent all this money on technology and developing these massive algorithms, there is no way I will trade only one stock. These machines are so fast and have such massive computational power that even latency slows them down. We have no choice to locate our servers as close as possible to the exchanges because the physics of the massive situation itself can no longer house us. The speed of light and fiber optics are slowing us down. So we're forced to use something called co-location. Now what is co-location? Well, simply put, I move my server as close as possible as I can to the exchange. Remember, I can't compute any time while my data is being sent over fiber optic. So instead of investing in technology and trying to figure out ways to get around the bottleneck, I simply ignore it and locate myself as close as possible to the exchanges. I want to reduce my latency as close as I can to zero. What is latency? Think of a boomerang. From the time I throw it with my hand to the time it returns to my hand is latency. We measure this in microseconds. So now that we all know that we do these similar approaches to finance and we all have this co-location and these really fancy computational machines, how do we compete against each other? Remember, we created algorithms in order to gain a competitive advantage over human traders out there. They simply cannot compete with us. But how do I compete with the next algorithm over? He's got the same technology as me. He probably co-locates as well. And he's probably got as many statisticians on staff. Well, we engage in a fun little game called quote stuffing. Now, it might seem like a complex concept or a weird name, but think of a machine as having a set amount of computational power. It can handle X amount of data per microsecond. In order for me to gain a competitive advantage over that machine, I try to slow it down. How do I do that? I simply stuff data into the market. I send random quotes, bid or ask prices. But because my machine originates this data, I can simply ignore it, and I gain a computational advantage over them. What have the repercussions been? Well, it's left a lot of people in the industry with some ethical dilemmas of what's really going on out there. Is this really the type of markets that we want to have, completely ruled by machines? One of the well-known repercussions has been the May 6th flash crash. A day where in about 12 minutes, markets that were already down about 2.5% ended up losing a massive amount of numbers. What happened? Algorithms simply walked away from the market. Now, there's many different theories over why this happened and why the algorithms failed and why did they get out of the market. But the important thing is that the media is calling this a single type freak event, something that may happen again, but most probably won't because we've learned from our mistakes. Well, what you're seeing now is a couple of different stocks all doing the same thing on an individual basis. The market may not react the same way, but ever since about 2007, there's about 15,000 different events, all the same as the flash crash, really. So are markets really doing well as we figure they are? Is this hybrid system really what we want to see on Wall Street? It doesn't really take a genius to see that when a stock goes from $76 up 10% and prints right back down to the exact same price, not even a full second later or a millisecond later, but a microsecond later, something's definitely wrong with markets. Now let's take a step back. This might seem like a crazy world out there. Wall Street, algorithms. Is it really that different than our daily lives? Think of hybridity. Man and machine being melded as one in a neural network. Think of the smartphones that are in this room. I'd probably say about 75% of us have them. What about co-location? How many of us have tried to move closer to work to avoid commute times? My algorithms try to do the exact same thing. So is this really different than our daily lives? The only difference is that when we make a mistake, can we reverse it? I close in showing you my favorite algorithm of the week, <laughs> one that's been extensively covered in the media, our good friend Watson, an initiative by IBM to compete against the two greatest champions from Jeopardy. Now, it's no secret that Watson was a very good competitor and actually had a 
almost a landslide victory versus the competitors. Now, when asked, they mentioned the toughest part of competing against this machine was not that it knew more than them, but how quick it hit the buzzer. Rather interesting concept that we are as smart as the machines, but it's simply that computing time and that reaction time that we lack. Personally, I just can't stand to watch an algorithm have a game show and that be the next area of TV. So do we really feel comfortable having these run this, our credit cards, and other areas of our lives? I personally don't think so. Thank you very much.